so Baofeng is at it again with another new GMRS radio. Let's take a look at the GMRS HT released in early 2024. Baofeng released the new GM21 GMRS radio in January 2024. As with so many GMRS radio, it's the GMRS brother to the UV21 Ham FM HT. For those of you who are fairly new to this, the UV in HT radio normally denotes a Ham HT with transmit capabilities in both the ultra high frequency band as well as the very high frequency band, thus the U and the V. Many FCC certified GMRS radios have received capabilities in both bands too, but can only transmit in the UHF band as that's where the GMRS channels are. That's why many of Baofeng's GMRS radios have a GM as part of their model name. Except for the transmit channelization found in GMRS radios, the GM21 is, I guess we could say, a fraternal twin to the UV21. The same mom and dad, but slightly different DNA. As we get started, thanks for clicking on this Gadget Talk channel video. On this channel, we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of mostly radio-related gadgets. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and click the thumbs up button so YouTube will offer this content to other radio enthusiasts. I really appreciate it. Let's start off by reviewing a few of the key features you'll find on the GM21. We'll demo some of them in just a few minutes. The kit we'll be looking at came from Amazon and I paid for it myself. As we'll see, it comes with two antennas, a charging cradle, USB-C charging cable for USB charging, and a wired earbud. It also comes with a belt clip, lanyard, and small screwdriver since the battery mounts via a screw. Radio features include all the standard GMRS channels and the ability to program DIY GMRS channels to better group your favorite channels by use of location. With 999 channels, it's unlikely you'll ever fill them up. All those channels also mean that with the broad frequency coverage of this dual band receiver, you can add lots of receive-only channels for things like ham repeaters, marine band channels, MERS channels, as well as local public service channels for those agencies who still use normal FM transmissions. To manage all those channels, the radio is supported by Chirp. You can download that at chirpmyradio.com. That's a fairly new URL for Chirp, but it's easy to search Chirp CPS on Google. When connected to the radio, use the GM5RH choice as the radio model. That ought to tell you that the data structure for the GM21 and the GM5RH are basically the same. I have the GM5RH and can tell you the primary difference is the case styling. The GM5RH has the traditional UV5R boxy appearance, whereas the GM21 has the rounded case with color inlays. Besides the VHF and UHF programmable channels, the radio also includes broadcast FM and access to the NOAA weather channels. I recently spoke with a friend who said that the NOAA weather channel access on a radio I'd lent him proved to be quite valuable when facing a wall of dark clouds on a recent trip. Using info from the NOAA weather reports for that area allowed him to avoid driving into what turned out to be a pretty bad spring storm. This kit also comes with a longer whip antenna. It's branded as the Abri 771 GMRS antenna. Let's change camera views and do a quick look at what you'll get and an exterior tour. Here's the box the Baofeng GM21 comes in. It's pretty typical of Baofeng boxes, but what's inside is what counts. So let's take a look at that. First is the owner's manual. It's got a, a little bit more color on the cover than some of them, uh, but inside it's pretty much the same as all of the other uh, Baofeng owner's manuals. They got some 
instructions on how to do many of the things, plus a list of all of the menu items and that kind of thing. So it's not bad, especially if you have some familiarity with these kind of radios. In terms of charging, you can charge the radio two ways. Uh, some of the 21 series Baofeng radios have got this cradle. It's wired in, so you don't plug the cord in. Uh, and then it's got just a little plastic insert here to fit the model of radio. And it's embossed right there, and it says UV21. And then it also comes with a USB-C cable, which you can use to charge it as well. The cradle is supposed to charge it a little faster, probably a little bit higher current flow through the cradle. Uh, but generally speaking, I tend to use the USB-Cs to charge my radio. There are a couple of security devices here. One is a little lanyard that you can put on the radio to put around your wrist. Uh, and then the other is the belt clip. And the screws for this belt clip, in this case, are mounted in the radio. Uh, and so they're, they're not in a separate sack or anything. So I haven't mounted the belt clip yet, but will. And I usually use lanyards just because I can uh, be a little dropsy sometimes with these radios. One of the interesting things about the kit is that it comes with two antennas. This is the typical little flexible antenna. They've gotten away from the little uh, thick, stiff, rubber ducky type antennas. Uh, this one is probably like a quarter wave or something like that. And then it comes with an Abri branded AR771 GMRS antenna. And uh, so these both come with the radio. Short one works just fine. I've been using that a little bit. The big one will allow you probably a little bit better range in open space, but two antennas coming with the radio is kind of a handy thing. So it comes with both of these two. And then last but not least is the little screwdriver because the battery, despite this radio not having an IP rating or an intrusion protection rating, the battery does screw on. And so it comes with a little common screwdriver. So that's what you're going to be getting. Now let's take a look at the radio itself. So here you can see the GM21 radio, and this is the ham version, the UV21. And you can see that these are uh, pretty much identical, the same kind of buttons, the same rocker panel here, the same number of keypad entry items here and so forth, and even the little case with this inset. This one obviously is orange, this one is charcoal gray, but you can see that these are basically the same radio, just with different firmware to allow this to work in the GMRS band. So let's take a look at this one. So the radio has a fairly large screen. I think it's like 1.7 inches. Uh, it's got buttons here, upper and lower. So you've got a menu and exit and a VOFO and memory key and an AB key, uh, the typical manual keys to make changes here. And then the up and down keys are here. I haven't found that there's a use for the center button, although it does click. Here on the keypad, we've got the typical keypads, one to zero plus star and, and uh, the hashtag or pound key. And so you can use these uh, to uh, key in frequencies, key in channels, and then if you're in the menu mode, you can press the key and go directly to the item that's printed on it. So like five, for example, is wide narrow, and six is like ABR, which is the, uh, the time that the uh, backlight will remain on. Then also then in menus, you can type multiple numbers to move through the menus fairly quickly. And I'll show you that in just a moment. On this side, we've got the push to talk, and then over here, We've got two programmable keys. We've got a, a, an up key and a down key and a middle. So actually there's three of them there and they have specific things assigned to each of them. Here's the battery. You notice I mentioned it had a screw. There's the screw hole. There are the clips for the cradle charging. And then here's the USB door that opens to a USB slot there. And the little charging indicator LED is right beside it. Here are the screws for the belt clip. Again, the belt clip's not on yet. Over on this side, we've got the K1 connector. And so we've got the mic and the speaker connectors there. And it's behind this door. On the top of the radio, we've got the antenna. Notice that there's a little spike in there. That means this is the male side. So if you're buying third party antennas, you would want an SMA female connector. There is the LED light for the flashlight and then the on off and volume switch there. This LED bar here will light green when it's receiving and red when it's transmitting. So that's a quick tour of the radio itself. Okay, with that out of the way, let's do a power on tour and take a look at the menu system and accessing some of the radio's other features. So here you can see the screen. It's got a, a white on black screen and it's got a number of icons there that you'll see pop up. I'm not gonna go through all of those. 
Although here in this repeater 16 channel, uh, we've got high power, we've got a positive offset, and then the D at the top means it's in the dual receive or dual watch mode, which means we've got both of these open right now. The battery indicator is right there. The little numbers right here and here represent the number of the channel versus the name. So repeater 16 is channel 24. GMRS1 is channel 001, and so forth. Here is the menu and the, the AB switch. And so if we go into menu, menu, the lower part of the screen closes in the menus display, and then we can work our way through the menus. Here's menu 45, the top menu. It gives you version and firmware, stopwatch, function, power on, message, and so forth. Press the blue to get out of menu. We enter menu again, and this time I want to um, go down to some of the smaller numbered menus. And so here in the code, we've got receive CTCSS and receive DCS. Use one or the other, but for example, if you wanted to set privacy codes on one of these low channels, you could pick the channel and then set the code. Uh, and here's the menu where you do that. So again, to do that, Press the menu a second time when you're in that menu. Notice that this starts to blink, and then you can work your way through the various codes, select the one you want, and then press menu again. In this case, I don't want one, so I'm going to press menu. Confirm. Confirms that it's off, and then I can exit. Now, normally when you're setting up a repeater, you would set up the transmit CTCSS because that's what's going out with this transmission, and it's the input code for the repeater. A lot of repeaters don't have output codes, and so you don't have to worry about that. So that's a quick look at how the menu system works. There's a lot of menus. Most of them you're not going to have to worry about just to take the radio out and use it. Now, the other thing we want to look at real quick is these side buttons. And so if we push this top button, it turns on the FM mode. A long press on that goes into monitor mode, which cancels all the squelch that you might have set. The middle button turns on the flashlight. It flashes with a second flash, and it turns off with the third. And then the bottom uh, of these three switches here changes the power. So look right here, you see it goes from H to low. And so that's a real handy shortcut for you. A long press. is the alarm. And so for the things that you might normally use the radio for, these three are pre-programmed probably the way you want them. So that is all pretty good. I think that's pretty much it in terms of uh, what we want to look at. Two quick things. We can lock the keyboard with a long press on the key, and then we can begin scanning with a long press on the Z. And as I recall, a long press on zero goes into the weather mode where we can find the local NOAA channel and we can listen to weather 24 hours a day if it looks like there's some storms coming and that kind of thing. Again, when you're here, you can just use this up and down buttons to find the one that works in your area. Now, at this point, just for the display, I don't have the antenna on, which is probably why we're not hearing that. And then we've got the NOAA label, and then we can press oh. exit to leave that, or we can do another long press on zero to leave that. So that's a quick power on tour of the GM21. A very natural question at this point is, what's the radio's range? I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but it's pretty much the same as the other radios in this category. From my back patio, I can hit the repeaters I normally hit with other small GMRS HTs. The fact is that geography plays such an important role when it comes to range that if I told you I got three miles between HTs, it's quite likely you'd get something significantly different. What is worth looking at is output power. Let's put the GM21 on a power meter and see what we get. We'll look at a couple of different channels to see if it changes much going up and down the channel range. But again, uh, I've got the radio set on high. That's what most of you are going to be doing on GMRS channels anyway. So let's take a look here on GMRS channel 5. That's the basic channels down near the bottom of the range. And so let's take a look and see what we have. 
got about 2.5 watts. A little on the low side, not terrible, but uh, not great either. Let's go up into the, the mid sections. So now we're on channel 16. Channel 16 will go with high power. Again, right at 2.5 watts. And now we'll go into the repeater range. So we're on repeater 16 or channel 24 and high power. And again, right at 2.5 watts. So all across the board, this little guy's putting out 2.5 watts, a little on the low side for a radio that's advertised for 5 watts, but not atypical for radios in this price range. Another aspect that's important to a lot of folks is how does the radio sound? Here's a receive and transmit clip for you to tell. GM21, receive test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Test out. GM21, transmit test. Transmit test 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Test out. Let's wrap this up with a couple of overall comments. We'll start with some shortcomings. First, as with most color screens of this type, they can be a bit hard to see in bright sunshine. The same can be said for the GM21. Shading the screen with your hands will provide enough shade to see the display. Second, when setting the radio to display the channel name instead of the nice, large, modern font used for the numbers, the text used for the letters is a small, basic font. It would sure be great if Baofeng used the similar font style for the letters as it does for the numbers. That would probably help with the visibility and sunshine as well. Next, having an elevated intrusion protection score or IP score would be a plus. An IP score of at least 54 would give users some confidence that the radio will operate safely outdoors in all but the most inclement wet weather. As we saw in the power clip, the output power is okay, but not great. Since I have the ham version of this radio, I did the same test in the 440 range in the ham band. The output was right at 3.5 watts, so one watt more than its GMRS brother. Last, I can see where those who travel a lot or see themselves as either off-grid or urban preppers could benefit from channel banks. With 999 channels, you'll likely need a notebook to keep track of what channel ranges contain what frequencies. Add scanning by bank and you'd have a very useful set of channel management tools. As the nursery rhyme goes, if wishes were horses, then beggars would ride. Anyway, here are some of the things I really like. First is the color choice. The color inlays on the radio's faceplate are a nice touch. Both the orange and gray look great in addition to the all-black version. Next is the fact that the kit comes with two antennas. The longer antenna should provide you with a little bit better performance when outdoors and range is a more important variable. The bank of nearly 1,000 channels is also a cool feature. As I said, you can program groups of channels for different situations. With 999 channels, even having the same channel programmed into six or seven groups really won't matter. As mentioned earlier, this would be even better if you could assign channels to banks. Last is the overall value proposition. At less than $35, the GM21 is a bargain. The solid build, familiar feature set, and Handsome case styling makes the GM21 a great choice for a GMRS newbie as well as an experienced operator who wants a full-featured budget class radio. Again, I purchased this radio from proceeds from the channel. It was not provided by Baofeng. As always, if you found this video helpful, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. If you're new to GMRS, Join me over here for my recent video on GMRS rules and regs. Thanks for watching.